Oh God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, I pray that you decrease Jackson and that you increase Christ. Lord God, right now, I pray that the words of my, of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, that they will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let the church say amen. Amen, amen. amen. On tonight, um, if you will peruse your eyes and to mark the 15th chapter, um, it's about, um, I guess, approximately 47 verses, but we're not going to go through all 47. So we're going to ask you to jaywalk from verse 1 to um, verse number 33. And you will find these words. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Verse number 34. And, um, and at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And if we could use for a brief subject, I just want to deal with forsaken, but never alone. Forsaken, but never alone. Here, here we see um, a word, you know, that jumps out to me is forsaken. And when you hear the word forsaken, it's the feeling of being isolated or forgotten about. Isolated or forgotten about. We're talking this same Jesus who 14 chapters earlier fulfilled the prophecy and was baptized by his cousin John and as a sign of approval by his father had the Holy Spirit descend upon him in the form of a dove. We're talking about this same Jesus the Christ who as a little 12 year old child methodically separated from his mother and father only to be later discovered so profound and eloquently being about his father's business. We're talking about the same Jesus, the same Jesus who walked on the water by defying all scientific evidence of gravity and molecular structure. We're talking about the same Jesus who cast out demons and even evil spirits. We're talking about the same Jesus who fed 9,000, 5,000 at one time, 4,000 the next time. This same, the same Jesus who turned many funerals into celebrations. We're talking about the same Jesus who did all of this for the first time finds himself hanging between two crooks with the weight of sin of humanity upon him without his father for the first time. We're talking about that same Jesus. And over there in John the 8th chapter and in the 29th verse, he says, earlier our Savior spoke and declared his death, but he also spoke that his father had never deserted him. Now he finds himself in the feeling of feeling forsaken. But I want to encourage somebody on tonight that it won't always be like this. It, 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 it won't always be like this. You may feel like sometimes you're by yourself and the people who came along with you are the ones that's bagging back away from you. You may even feel like John on the Isle of Patmos, but I came to tell you on tonight that it won't always be like this. And it's, 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 it's strange that this is the fourth word um, of Jesus, and it's, it's kind of strange because it's seven in all, and number four represents the halfway mark, and so I just came to even encourage you a little bit further and say that you're halfway through. <laughs> it's strange that he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me when he was halfway through the completion of that particular promise? And so the first thing we see here is the transparency of a weighted Savior. We see the transparency of a weighted Savior because for the first time in his life, it's no longer father and son, it's son all by himself. Yeah. Many of us sometimes feel like we're all by ourselves and feel like the weight of the world is upon our shoulder. He didn't just start feeling like this upon the cross, but he felt like this even in the Garden of Gethsemane. My God, if you would um, go over there and read in your time of studying in the 14th chapter, he took the disciples with him. He said, you know, you all stay here and wait for me while I go pray and only to come back and find them at least three times asleep. And then he told Peter, Peter, you're going to deal with some stuff right now because you can't even watch and pray. And you, you know, our flesh, you know, is weak, but the spirit is willing. You know, sometimes we find ourselves at a realization of our destiny because when he realized what was to come, he asked this God, God, um, if you can allow this thing to pass by me, I, I'll be okay. And sometimes in our life, if we can just give God, um, if, if God can just hear us and we say, God, you know, let, let this thing pass by me. I know what I'm about to go through. He said, God, my father, I know what's about to come upon me. I know the weight of the sins of these people are going to be upon me. But he took a very 
awesome stance and said, nevertheless, not, not, not my will, not what I want, not, not the easy route, but God, I want your will to be done. Not only did we, do we see this, but we also see darkness come over the whole entire universe. If you will look at verse number 33, it said, at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until about 3 o'clock. So from noon until 3 o'clock, darkness is over the entire universe. But this darkness here is an indication of the Father's judgment on the sins of the world being born upon his son. This darkness is, 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 is how much torture that occurred when our Father in heaven saw what his only begotten son was about to go through. But this torture yet pleased, and it also fulfilled the purpose and promise for which Christ was sent. Not only do we see the transparency of a weighted Savior, but here we see the insufficiency of a prominent independence. We see the insufficiency of a prominent independence. We see here isolation. We, we, we notice there in verse number 34, it said, Then at 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice. This wasn't just some little low call, Father, you know, my God, my God, why have you? He, he yelled at the top of his lung, my God. My God, why, why have you forsaken me? And sometimes we get to the point where we just have to yell a little bit. I know, I know all, all, all the years of my life, you know, my parents yelled at me a lot. Why? Because I didn't want to listen. Some of you all may yell at one another because you're trying to get a point across. But this cry wasn't a, a cry of distress. or not, never, It wasn't a cry of distrust. It was a cry of distress. You know, sometimes that, that my God phrase didn't say that, oh, God, I, I'm not trusting in you anymore. It's, and a, a recognize, he's recognizing that his father is still the all-knowing, all-sufficient one. Sometimes we have to get into the point of our life where although we're, we're carrying the weight of the world around us, we must be remindful that we still have a God who changes not. And that a God who said that his word would never, ever change. This is the only time that we hear this particular my God because Jesus normally addresses his father as Abba or father. It's an indication that although I'm in distress, I trust your plan even when it goes against my own preference. My God, I trust you, God, even when it goes against my own preference. But then another thing that excites me in this particular passage is because we said that he felt forsaken. And we must remember that although you feel forsaken, doesn't mean you're out on the island all by yourself. Sometimes you, we have to look at the facts of life instead of the feelings of life. Good God Almighty. Because the word of God says over there in 2 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, um, and the 18th verse, that the things that we see are temporary, but the things that we can't see are eternal. And so this particular moment that he was feeling, although he was feeling that way, that don't mean that the facts lined up with what Jesus the Christ was feeling. Lord, have mercy. And now, not only do we see that this is the first time, this is the only time, but this is the first time that we see a loss of contact and a feeling of intimacy between father and um, between son because the resolve of humanity was recognized. The weight of the sins were recognized. What he knew that he was, when you know you're about to go through something, you don't just sit there and be like, okay, God, I'm, I'm just going to go on anyhow. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's why David said, sometimes I got to encourage myself because what I'm about to go through is too much for me. What I'm dealing with is too much for me to carry. But thanks be to God that although I feel alone, I'm never forsaken. My God, my God. And not only do we see isolation, but we also see the sacrifice. The sacrifice of the precious Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. In 2 Corinthians Chapter number 5, verses 21, it said, God made him who had no sin to be the sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad that somebody that, that, that was perfect was the ultimate sacrifice for me because I couldn't be the, I, 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 I'm, I love you, I love you, Pastor, but I, I wouldn't want to hang up on the cross for you. I love my auntie to death, but I wouldn't want to hang up on the cross for anybody in here. And that's not saying that my love isn't for you all, but it's just some things that us in this human flesh, you know, we, we, can't, we can't do. So I'm glad that God had a precious lamb. God, God had the best that he could give. When, when the people of God were offering sacrifices during Passover, they would say that they were supposed to offer a lamb without spot or blemish. And this was the, this, this was the perfect 
perfect lamb of God. And so although he was forsaken because he had engulfed himself in the filthy stench of sin, he still hung up there on that cross and yelled out, my God, <clears throat> my God, why have you forsaken me? But although he felt forsaken, he was never alone. This was the official atonement, the lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. But lastly and finally, we see the consistency of a caring father. My God, although, although Jesus felt the weight of the sins of the world upon him, he still had a caring father. He still had a loving father. You know, sometimes we have to get disciplined, but the Bible says that God disciplined those he loved. And if he didn't love you, he wouldn't discipline you. So when you get to feeling as if this is too much for you to carry, remember that your God is a God who doesn't change. Hallelujah, God. Because it said in John 3, 16, it said that his love was so profound that he gave his only begotten son that if whoever in here believing on him, we won't have to perish, but we'll have everlasting life. This love is so profound for us that he was willing to sever his connection with his only begotten son. How many of us in here can throw your hands up and say, okay, God, if, if you ask me, I give my child, I give my brother, I give my mom, I give my dad, I give the only thing I got <clears throat> to save to people who don't even care about me, to save some people who mock me, who beat me. To save some people who really don't even want my salvation. Even though I'm up here decreeing and declaring what's going to happen, they still don't believe. My God, they've done everything they could do to say that I'm not the son of God. They even, we, we even had a man that, that was so, so much of a punk that he still threw me out there. Pilate said, we, what, what, what are you really going to do this? But, hey, I'm going to wash my hands, but I'm going to give you what you want. He, he, couldn't even, he couldn't even stand up and tell them. That this man is truly the son of God. Still giving him over. What, so sometimes that's what we do. God, I, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to still do it anyway. God, I see, I, I know that I'm torturing you when I do this, but I'm going to still do it anyway. But thanks be to God that even when, when we forsake him, he never leaves us alone. Thank you, Jesus. And his delay was not the dead end but a passageway to life eternal in the heavens above. This thing that Jesus the Christ did wasn't something to be taken lightly. And even when we feel as if we've done all we could do, when you feel like you've gone the last mile of your way, even when you get out of your way, God said, although you forsake me, <laughs> you're never alone. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm standing here. I'm, I'm waiting for you to come to me. And that's what made me happy and so elated on tonight because there is a lot of times when we forsake his will for our own will. But sometimes it's not, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But my God, why have I forsaken you? And so on tonight, as I take my seat, I pray that we learn how not to forsake his will for our will. Yes, we're going to sin to come short of the glory of God. But I tell you that it's a, it's, it's a sad day when we begin to sit in our own mess. Even a person that's bedridden has to be turned every now and then or they'll get bed sores. So even when you feel like you're just in your funk, I, I, I just decree and declare that you get back up again. That you get back up out of there and not forsake Jesus the Christ. Amen.